Right now, we go north of the state line for our pigskin preview. And right now with me, I have the head coach for the Janesville Craig Cougars, Ben McCormick. And, Coach, good to have you on today. And uh, hard to believe that uh, next a week from tomorrow, Friday, when we're doing this on a Thursday, is your first game. Thanks for having me, Mike. I appreciate that. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, it's gone incredibly fast. Uh, two days always always do, especially, I think, for coaches sometimes more than kids. But there's so little time to get so many things in. And we're looking forward to our scrimmage tomorrow and our, our kickoff against Boyd on uh, the 21st. You know, doing some homework on you guys, I think you guys kind of got over the hump. You know, the last couple of years you were hanging around 500. Last year you were over 500. Is that something you've been able to build on this year as you get ready for the 2015 season? Our goal is always to make the postseason. And the three years prior, we were, we were one game away each each of those years. And that was tough. We had some opportunities to, I think, do that. And like you said, last year uh, we had a good group of seniors, uh, that uh, kind of got us over the hump. We went six and three in conference and, and tied for third place in the conference, and that was uh, one of the better finishes we've had in the last several years. So it's part of our guys, but uh, you know everything's what have you done for me lately? And yeah. we have a new group of kids, good group of kids that we're excited about, and um, it's a brand new year. Let's take a look uh, offensively. Uh, you talked about losing some seniors. You're going to have to replace anybody on offense that you have to count on this year, Coach. Well, it's funny you said that. We. Uh, we have to replace a lot of guys. I, I asked the question the very first day of practice, said, raise your hand or stand up if you started for us last year, week one. There wasn't one guy. Oh, wow. So, uh, we, started 20, we started 21 seniors and one junior who was no longer with us, um, no longer on our team anymore. And so we had 22 new offensive and defensive starters. Uh, so it's it's a it's learning curve, it's, but it's exciting. I think the kids are excited. Their first opportunity to get on the field in the starting role for most of them. And, um you know, we really don't know what we have. Uh, there's a lot of competition for spots, but we don't know how they're going to respond in game situations necessarily. But uh, we're optimistic, like I think everybody is at this time of the year. I knew you. I was doing some homework too. You do a lot of passing. You lot change your the way you do things this year with a bunch of new starters and, and a new quarterback. No, we're going to be we're going to run our system, and we always. <clears throat> I feel like we always try to get our our athletes with the ball in their hands in space if we can, whether that be at the receiver position, whether it be at our, our running back position. You, you try to get those kids that are pretty dangerous with the ball in their hand in a position to be successful. And so it depends year to year what you have and uh, where you think your strengths lie. <clears throat> but we're going to try to do that again this year, and we really don't know where those strengths are for sure at this point. So it's open for all the starting positions for you then. I mean, that has been kind of a uh, like a tryout camp to try out to be the starter then. It has. It's been really fun. This is in my, I think this is my 18th year of coaching. I've never been in a situation like this where we truly don't know uh, at several positions who's going to be the number one guy at this point. And we're a day away from our scrimmage and a week away from our first team. And um, whether that's the case at quarterback for us right now, we're still up in the air about uh, the quarterback position. And um, guys are doing a good job competing for that, that spot along with all the other spots on our team. Is that why you get into coaching, though, too, Coach? You like to build those kids and, and get going again? I mean, that's part of the fun, I guess, of being in high school. you got a new uh, look every year. Yeah, you can. It's not college. So you yeah. don't get to recruit the type of kid that you want to recruit uh, necessarily. And uh, it is fun. It, there's a lot of unknowns about that. Uh, it, can be a, it can be a struggle at times, uh, but it is always it's a nice challenge to, to take on. And I think as, the longer I've been in coaching, um, the more rewarding it is seeing those teams kind of grow together. Um, and, you, and I've learned you can't define success always just by straight wins and losses. It's about, you know, the, the process of how you get there. Did you give your best effort? Did you have a good attitude? Did you bring good energy? Those things that you can control, and can you get kids to do those things? Because that's how they're going to be successful, not only in the football field, but beyond that. Uh, defensively, mm-hmm. is it the same thing? You said you have to look at everybody, so you got to kind of throw them all in together and find out mm-hmm. who's going to work for you this year. Yeah, and I, I should say this. We're not young. We're inexperienced. Mm-hmm. We have 40-plus seniors, which is, wow. I, I'd say, as many seniors as probably anybody has around. Um, maybe not anybody, but most, most schools would be lucky to have 40 seniors, which we have. Our junior class is not very big. Um, but a lot of these guys are very good players. They were just stuck behind very mm-hmm. good seniors last year. 
So this is their first opportunity to, to get on the football field as a starter and uh, show what they can do, and I think they're excited about that as well. Will this allow you to be two platoon this year? You know, not many teams, especially where we're at here in Illinois, gets to two platoon, much, much less have uh, to replace everybody. We always, that's kind of our philosophy, we try to two platoon. We mm-hmm. feel like if you take an athlete and put him on one side of the ball the entire year, and you let him get better and better and better at what he's doing and a lot of reps at that, by the end of the season you'll be a better football team and maybe taking a slightly better athlete, playing him both ways throughout the course of a nine-game Big 8 regular season. Uh, that takes a toll on your body and condition-wise, especially if you're on the line of scrimmage, that's tough for an offensive and defensive lineman to endure the entire season going both ways, all those snaps. So we will have some kids go both ways, but if at all possible, we try to play kids primarily on one side of the ball. Uh, but that's not always possible. You have to have some kids go both ways at times. And we say we try to play an athlete max of a game and a half. So if you a mm-hmm. full-time starter on defense, he might play half the snaps on offense. And that's about the most you want to play him. You try to keep him somewhat fresh and somewhat healthy throughout the course of the year big part of high school football anymore is special teams. They can make or break you. How does that look for the Cougars in the upcoming year? Well, I'm going to sound like a broken record. A lot of new guys, a lot of new faces there. <laughs> um, you know, but I think, I do think we have some, we have some good speed. We have some guys who I think like to rally the football and, and special teams is so much about want to and, and having a great attitude and, and just flying to the football. And I think we have some of those guys. Uh, it's nice, too, we have some of those guys that maybe aren't a one or a two because they're behind some pretty good players at their own position. This gives them an opportunity to contribute on the football field on Friday nights. Um, and most of our guys, and all of our guys, I should say, have done a great job accepting that role um, and taking pride in that responsibility they have. You know, Coach, uh, you're talking about having 40 seniors. How do you do that? That's, you have a large size roster, and most of the times when we talk to coaches, they're, they're happy just to have enough guys to get through the season. You guys have a bunch of kids out. Like I said, our junior class is a little bit small. We have a total of, uh, I want to say, 66 kids, 65 kids right now. Uh, and so we try to keep them um, fresh in practice, meaning that we'll have a couple different scout teams go against our number one wow. in defense which is a, it's a luxury to have, mm-hmm. uh, but it also gives those kids an opportunity to be active in practice, not be idle on the sideline and sometimes become disinterested. We try to keep our kids moving and active um, throughout throughout the course of practice so it doesn't get you know, monotonous um, and, they, and they feel like they're contributing. When you look at your uh, conference this year, the Big 8, which you really have 10 teams, but uh, the Big 8, uh, who do you look to be the uh, the favorites this year? Who you be chasing uh, to win that conference title? You're going to think this is a cliche answer, but um, I honestly have no idea. I mm-hmm. really don't. I know that there's a number of schools that, um, well, I'll use Madison East as an example. I think they they won one, one or two games last year in the conference, and they gave – Everybody, every week, everything they wanted. I mean, mm-hmm. they were a tough, they're tough out last year. I mean, they were they're a good football team. So, I imagine they're going to be better. You know, you have the three kind of the big three: some Prairie, Verona, and Middleton, who are always, you know, very competitive. Um, and I honestly don't know about Mass Memorial. They have a new coach. The fall it was very sound last year. There were seven win teams in the conference. Um, I, I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure at all. To be honest with you, I really. I really don't know. You have to be ready every night is what you're telling me, Coach. Yeah, that's what we preach to our kids. Um, I've, and I share some stories with them from my, like I said, I've I've been on for a little while now, and you know, there's been some times where we've, I've been on the side where we're clearly the better team, and we got our hind end kicked because yeah. our kids weren't ready to play. And so I think you always try to prepare your kids each and every week that um, you got to go out there and be ready to play regardless of, what you may or may not think about the opponent. And I know that uh, I've talked to Beloit Memorial coach, uh, coach uh, Whiting, who came over from Bigfoot, very successful. I kind of compare him to Dan Apino, who's at Auburn here, where he left a very successful program into a program that was struggling. He kind of scares you a little bit, doesn't he? he? I mean, he knows his football, so now you got to worry about those guys who've had a couple of off years in the past few years. And then you open with them. Yeah, Rodney's a, he's a great guy, first of all. He's a 
he's a great football coach. I think his his record speaks for itself. Uh, when he was at Bigfoot, and I can tell in the meetings we've had, and the time I've spent around him, uh, he knows the game, and um, I think he came into a situation where it's he's trying to build that program, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I think he'll do that. I think he's the guy for the job, and I think that. Um, and I again, I don't know how they're going to be. I know they struggled last year, but I can only imagine they're going to get better and better and better each and every year that he he stays there. Well, Coach, thanks so much for taking time out. You're the athletic director there, too, at Craig. I don't know how you do both jobs, but uh, we appreciate you taking the time, and uh, we hope to see you at the Beloit Memorial game to start the season. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Mike. We've been talking with Coach uh, Ben McCormick, the head coach of Janesville Craig. They'll open the season against the Beloit Memorial Purple Knights. For the StateLineSportsHub.com, I'm Dave Schmidt.